Hello everybody and welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Steve and today I'm going to do an overview on this product from Intel. This is Intel's 730 series SSD. I'm also going to do some benchmarks too, so let's get started. All right, and now we have the Intel 730 series SSD, the 240 gigabyte capacity out of its chassis. And here we are looking at the NAND packages as well as the Intel controller and everything on the PCB here. So I'll spin that around so you can get a, a better look of everything on there. Uh, capacitors there are, are actually helping that enhanced power loss data protection that I mentioned earlier. And I'll spin that back around so you can see some of the NAND packages here. So uh, opening this obviously is going to break your five-year limited warranty, so don't do that unless you're unless you intend on doing exactly that. This is the third generation of Intel storage controllers. The specific model number or the specific number here is PC29AS21CA from Intel. And this is the very first time that Intel has engineered a factory overclocked SSD controller and NAND bus speeds because apparently they've increased the controller clock speed from 400 megahertz to 600 megahertz and brought up the NAND bus speeds from 83 megahertz to 100 megahertz. In addition, they've actually optimized the firmware here on this controller for client-based platforms and uncompressed workloads. And that's basically uh, because they're going for PC enthusiasts and workstation users, guys, versus uh, server-side applications. Now, the NAND here, several NAND packages down below the controller. Uh, Intel are using MLC NAND. And the NAND actually, they're providing a lot more NAND than 240 gigabytes that you've actually purchased this drive for, but that's because they need to uh, be able to use it for caching and over-provisioning over as well, well as wear leveling. Uh, but yes, you still end up with that 240 gigabyte drive at the end of the day after five years of usage. Uh, and speaking of over-provisioning and wear leveling, this 240 gigabyte drive has been engineered for 50 gigabyte writes per day, and the 480 gigabyte version has been engineered for 70 gigabyte writes per day. As compared to a typical SSD, which would probably be designed for 20 gigabytes of writes per day, you can see that they've increased uh, what this drive should be able to do over a longer period of time just by those uh, two engineering feats there. And depending on if you're reading the product brief or Intel specification sheet, uh, you're getting a mean time between failures of either 1.2 million or 2 million hours. Finally, on to the benchmarks of the Intel 730 series SSD, and we only have the 240 gigabyte one to test, but I'm gonna go ahead and start off with our test bench setup. We're using an Intel Core i7-4770K, socketed securely into the Asus Maximus 5 Formula Z87 motherboard. Uh, we are utilizing G-Skill Trident, an eight gigabyte kit of 2666 mega transfer per second uh, clocked memory. That is with Windows 8.1 Pro and running Intel RST version 12.9.0.1001. And we did have this drive uh, using plugged into the SATA Rev 3 6 gigabit per second controller native to the Z87 uh, drive. So keep that in mind. And we'll go ahead and move forward with the very first benchmark. Here we have a TTO or Addo's benchmark. And you can see here that the write speeds are actually topping off here at is about 293 megabytes per second. Uh, but and then if we jump into the reads, we jump all the way up to 547 megabytes per second. But you can see right after about the 4K uh, uh, read size, uh, file size, it's actually just peaking right about there. So you can see it's just used for the 4K file sizes and jumping around on this particular drive for that. Let me go ahead and jump over to the next Addo benchmark. This is QDEP 10. I forgot to mention before that it was actually QDEP 4 that we were looking at just a moment ago. We can see very similar benchmarks here uh, jumping up to, uh, no, it's exactly the same. We're still looking at 290 megabytes per second pretty much across the board, maxing out here at what looks like maybe 294 megabytes per second on the right side. On the read side, we're looking at 559 megabytes per second. So clearly you can see this drive is going to be great once you install everything uh, and the read speeds are just going to be very, very quick for any type of, uh, I, guess I, I guess I would probably promote this for gaming. Um, but anything else that enthusiasts might need fast read times with, including booting up your system. Here we are at Crystal Diskmark next and we can see the sequential uh, reads and writes and then we see that uh, the 512K as well as the 4K and the 4K QDEP32 here. Looks like it maxes out here at uh, 466 megabytes megabytes uh, per second read, and then we have write of 291 megabytes per second. 
And we jump down here to our random read writes. We also see 406 at the 512 uh, kilobyte and uh, 512 kilobyte writes, 290 megabytes per second, so 406 and 290. And then jumping down to QDEP32, which is actually what Intel actually uh, did their own benchmarks at, you can see at 366 megabytes per second uh, on the random read and random write, 288 megabytes per second, translating to uh, input output uh, operations per second of 89,488 on the read and 70,427 on the random write. And that is compared to what Intel is saying it should be 86,000 on the read and 56,000 on the random write at uh, 4 kilobyte QDEP32. So you can see it's actually exceeding what they, what they initially said it should by quite a bit here. Uh, this, of course, all being synthetic benchmarks. Let me go ahead and move right along to the very next benchmark. Looks like we're on to ASSSD now. We have the megabytes per second read and write on the right on the left, and then we have read and write IOPS on the right using ASSSD. Uh, sequentially, we're looking at 497 megabytes per second on the read. On writing, we're looking at 278 megabytes per second. If you jump down to 4K at 64 thread, we have 333 megabytes per second on the read and 232 megabytes on the write. Uh, grand total score here is 1,000 from uh, ASSSD. And then we jump over to the IOPS, uh, that being, let's see, it has a maximum here. It looks like 4K 64 thread is reading as 85,403 IOPS uh, on the read and then 59,535 on the write. And moving right along, we have the ASSSD copy benchmark uh, here representing uh, and synthetic for ISO copying programs as well as games. We're seeing a 276 megabytes per second in ISO, 180 for the programs, and 225 megabytes per second for games. Uh, and access times here, 3.0, or not access times, so I guess the speed at which these are being transferred, 3.89 seconds, 7.79 seconds, and 6.12 seconds. Moving right along, we have ASSSD's compression, compression benchmark. Uh, the red line here is the writes. The green line is, of course, the reads. Uh, it starts out a little bit low, probably around 390 megabytes per second, then peaking probably at 515 on the writes, and then staying pretty steady at about 490 across the board. Uh, on the right side, we're looking at pretty much 280 the whole time on the writes. Uh, in terms of compressible uh, data. And then that is also because this particular drive, if it had any kind of uh, compression that was built in to the hardware side that would help it accelerate these types of writes, then you would see it to totally creeping up here uh, and giving you a, an increasing trend. Not in this particular case, though, but that's perfectly fine. Now, finally, we're on to uh, Blackmagic Design's disk speed test. You can see with the reads and writes here, uh, we're looking at 274 megabytes per second on the write and 497 megabytes per second on the read. And you can see it's actually giving us all the check marks on which this drive would be okay to use uh, for your video editing system. Looks like we can get all the way up to uh, 2K uh, resolutions, 1556 at 25 frames a second. Uh, it's great for reading off of those speeds, but it's not good for writing if you're jumping up to 10, uh, 10 bit RGB 444, uh, 444 color, as well as 12-bit RGB 444 color uh, writing. It won't be able to, to provide much help there, but if we look at the 10-bit uh, YUV 422 color scheme, it looks like it's okay here, uh, except for writing at 1080p at, uh, at 60 frames per second, it's not going to be capable of that. But you can see, go ahead and pause this and, and look through specifically to see which color scheme you're actually uh, going to be running in, and that will help you decide on if this drive is going to work for you. Okay, everybody, that is going to wrap up this overview and benchmarks from Intel's 730 series SSD. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button. And if you haven't already done so, click subscribe to any of our various YouTube channels. We will see you guys very soon.